Ready? I think so. Yeah, okay. Uh, just a few updates on Ember Pro Select that pretty much so everybody here talk me talk uh, hear me, hear me talking about that. Uh, I think I implemented the last, the ultimate feature. I mean, the one, the last one I'm going to implement ever <laughs> on the component. But right now, uh, from now on, it's up to you. Uh, and it's basically this small thing where you can type even if the company is closed, like real selects. That's the last feature is going to go in the core. You can type even if the company, when the component is focused and uh, when you have it open, typing basically selects the thing you're typing. And if you wait one second, the type is, uh, sorry, the search is reset, like in real select. And that made uh, the last release, uh, if we go to GitHub, we, that's the release I advise you to use now, this one, this, the very latest thing. Uh, probably it's not going to be any change before 1.0, apart from bug fixing, and uh, probably a bootstrap Vim out of the box, but or, or even a material, uh, material design Vim, but or probably only styles, and obviously additions, not, not uh, changes. And another big, uh, big feature of this release is, um, the previous one actually, but it's included in this one, is a uh, fast food support. <laughs> <laughs> Chicken Milanese with fries. Ah, yes, uh, the release names is always what I ate this day. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, no, I'm really, I mean, I have a lot. <laughs> Let me check. What are you gonna That's do? smart. Coming up with names for releases is the hardest part. What no, no, it's, I, it's, very, it's very important. People uh, oh probably nice. over, I mean, <laughs> this, I don't know. It's, I don't know, poor ribs. Hey. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I have more, I guess. Kim. <laughs> <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> well, going back to the topic. Um, we have, uh, sorry, releases again. We have uh, now fast food support and accessibility. And the thing I want to show is about fast food. I've been playing with fast food for a while. I thought it was still in very early days, but after using, using it for a while, it happens to work pretty well. I mean, everything I tried worked. And if something breaks, it's because something was not prepared to, to for fast food because I was, I was using jQuery, jQuery maybe or something like that, which obviously doesn't work when it's, there is no DOM. In, uh, so uh, basically I don't, I'm not going to try to install things from NPM again. Everything is installed. Uh, if I open here this thing, the only thing you need to do for make something work in fast food is basically add this line basically Ember install Ember CLI fastboot. And when it's done, if you go to Ember CLI fastboot, first of all, everybody's aware of what fastboot is? Uh, okay. For running in the back end, or sorry, for, for running fastboot after the install, you just do this locally, at least. So, oops. And um, sorry, uh, this is not the proper repo. <laughs> there, there. Building. Happens to run three thousand. It's running. There is that. And if I inspect. I don't know how, disable, how to disable JavaScript. Uh, anyone knows how to disable JavaScript? Maybe look at um, it in Safari. F1, and then, then you should have the <coughs> settings for. Is it under secure? F1? Okay. F1 and disable then JavaScript, then. I see. So, <coughs> JavaScript disable, I close. If I go probably to. This is a upper tab thing or a. Tab. Okay, so. So if I go to... I yeah, I'll try having a look in Safari because you can globally disable JavaScript there. But I can go to Ember browser editing this tab and nothing should work. Okay. Effectively, nothing works. And in localhost 3000, it does. Hey. And uh, things like links and everything works. You can read the documentation 
without JavaScript. Obviously, examples are not going to uh, are not going to work. Oh, actually, they are working because I because I closed the the dev tools. That's <laughs> it. Open the dev tools to see it fail. Uh, F1. Okay. So now it's not working. I click things, nothing happens. And if you want to see how the page will behave in real world, you can probably open this thing. Uh, so so the, the navigation is that uh, it's working with link to, but is it working with you have, you have actions in there as well that do the navigation it wouldn't, right? No, it has to be links to because links to happens to be just regular anchor tags. Yeah, yeah. And if there is no JavaScript, you may will make another request. Right. And actually, you say that uh, cookbook, search the docs, and if in here. Uh, cookbook again, I another request to cookbook. It's pretty fast. It's faster in production, um, and the idea is uh, fast boot in, in theory serves the HTML with all the styles and the JavaScript. And once the JavaScript loads, basically Ember repaints everything. But the final goal is to have what they call rehydration. So you render the page, Ember loads, generates the, uh, the new HTML, uh, but before doing that, compares the existing HTML. And if it's the same, there's nothing to do. I continue. Whether well, now it's doing a full refresh. But it's something that usually is that fast that you don't realize. And I'm going to enable JavaScript again. Uh, if you reload, Ember now is loading, and everything is working. Actually, you can see how way Ember loads, because I have some kind of a, a logic for making this. I mean, the styles. And when Ember actually boots, you see a small jump in the styles. I should probably oh. fix that. <laughs> um, where is the tooling for network conditions? If we simulate something like, uh, I don't know, regular 4G or good 3G, maybe, for example. You see, and the application right now has no JavaScript. But once this is thing start, it stops spinning, uh, the application is usable. But now, even if this thing hasn't finished, I can open and, and navigate because it's going to work. So especially important for mobile. And another thing I want to show, this is pretty much everything I have on Fastboot. It's a, uh, I, well, first, first of all, this, uh, here it is, Ember Browser Sortable, we made live. And the other is, I made this demo for, uh, some people wants to use native selects uh, in mobile, but they want a richer experience in, in desktop. So I built this thing, which is an add-on on top of Ember Power Select. That is, is exactly that. You specify Ember Power Select with fallback, and uh, it will, in, when certain conditions are met, it will render a, a regular select instead of the enriched version. By example, uh, fallback when mobile. And that's the other thing you need to do. And in the demo, you will see. That's uh, using regular um, select, sorry, the power select. And if you decide to fall back, regular uh, standard select, you select this and this. And if you go back, everything is selected still. I mean, you are exactly wrapping the same, I mean, the interface is the same, but depending on some condition, it renders a regular select or the power select. And that can vary between iOS, Android, phone. You can detect if there is a screen reader, perhaps, because you want to have the best accessibility. Even if I implemented accessibility, nothing is going to be better than a plain select. And actually, since not all usages of Ember Power Select can be translated into uh, standard selects, basically, this implements a few naive uh, con uh, assertions that only run in development. So if you are trying to or to use this component and you are passing, by example, a custom search function, there is no such a thing as a custom search function that you can trigger from a select. So that is going to warn you, caution, this is something you cannot translate. Uh, try something else. Or I mean, if you insist, it's going to continue. At the moment, it's not a hard failure. But you need to be aware that it's probably not going to work very well in, 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 in plain select mode. Um, that's pretty much it. Ah, no, I have another one. Uh, <laughs> sorry, about uh, Fastboot still. The problem with Fastboot I found is not Fastboot itself, it's wor working very well, is uh, who do we test Fastboot? There is no literature, there is nothing, in, pretty much nothing in the web I found. 
So talking with Robert Jackson, Tom Dale and everything, I started spiking something that is going probably to be the way we test Fastboot. And as you will see, probably Fastboot tests are going to live in a different folder. And that's the thing I created called Model for Fastboot. It's uh, something that will, uh, once, uh, once used, will resemble the same thing we use for uh, regular testing. We have this.visit and you say uh, you pass a URL and in the then you will receive the headers of the request and we are using JS DOM to actually pass the response so you can do assertions with query selector and everything on the content. So basically you make a request, the server of us boot is actually happens to be a express middleware so I boot express application right away and at the moment, the port of the application is hard-coded to this thing because I want it. But the thing is, this the port can be incremental. So you could be able to run a test in parallel with many applications running on different ports. So you can you test your, uh, your, fastboot, your fastboot application, by example, uh, crawling all your application in parallel. So you should be able to check that every single page you have renders in Fastboot uh, very fast, like, uh, and will be part of the regular test them, ember test, dash dash serve, and it will all the time check that the changes you make actually don't break Fastboot. And in, the ultimate goal is that Fastboot will be the default. Pretty much everyone is going to use Fastboot, and see, like right now, people is surprised when they say, I'm not using Ember CLI, Right now it would be surprising for someone doing Ember not using Ember CLI. I think in, a, in nine months from now it will be surprising for people. I'm not using Fastboot. Why not? Why you are opting out for Fastboot? It will be so easy to, to use that uh, pretty much everybody is going to, to do it. As soon as you install Fastboot, probably when do, you do, uh, you use the, the blueprints to generate a root, we'll generate the root, the test, and the Fastboot test for this root and everything will be, and the fastboot test basically, in even the very basic thing will be request and see that at least you get a 200 okay for the, for the backend. And that's, the, that's everything. Thank you.